Hello, this is Craig, and I wanted to show you a new dungeon method, a new dungeon generation method. Um, this is an interesting way to generate random dungeons. Uh, imagine a roguelike built with these maps instead of the standard roguelike maps. So these maps have a high level of variability, but they are never broken in that you can always reach every location, and while they are highly variable, um, they are never they're never confusing so here you can see a random example where you'd enter down here and you would quickly start to discover the layout of this region uh, and of course there would be doors and a couple of other barriers and so on but even within it's not just the edges of the room that have weird topology to them even within the room you get variations in the height of the room and over here you've got some broken floor got some more broken floors over there. So you can see that these areas have a lot of, of interesting features to them, both in terms of their shape and in terms of things within the room, such as broken floors or, uh, or, or uh, standing, uh, standing uh, uh, columns or other sorts of details. And that's before you flesh them out using various uh, tools like placing doors and monsters and desks and treasures. Uh, now, a tabletop GM could also use this map generation system simply because it would give him a strong um, set of ideas. When he looked at this, he would say, well, these rooms are probably populated by these kinds of challenges or these kinds of monsters. Um, even the roguelikes would have a fun time. Look at all these little barriers that you can work with. Uh, this particular map is pretty degenerate. Um, if I was trying to choose which map to use, I probably wouldn't use this kind of repetitive spider web map. But the reason it's degenerate is because I put the brush numbers, uh, I made it, I made the brush numbers low. Let's go ahead and increase them again. But even when it is degenerate, you can simply start over and roll up another dungeon. So you can see that this dungeon has a lot of really interesting regions. Here's some broken areas. Um, some wide open rooms, but they have nooks and crannies in them. Uh, and then you've got some more interesting rooms with complex diagonal hallways that have nooks coming off of them. Perfect for suits of armor, including enchanted ones, uh, that get up and attack you. You have some degenerate hallways up here, which are fun in small doses. Um, and you have, of course, the ever popular string of rooms. <laughs> So every dungeon you generate is going to have its own unique look and a pattern that it um, uh, that it tends to to riff on. So this dungeon is going to have a lot of these woven areas. Um, now again, this is something of a degenerate pattern. Uh, I haven't polished this very much. I've only been working on it for about an hour, hour and a half now, I guess. So there are still going to be some degenerate dungeons. Um, although I'm sure there are ways to prevent that. So here you've got some interesting rep some repetitions on a theme followed by a complete break and a new kind of theme followed by more repetitions on the theme but just when you think you might be getting into something repetitive it breaks up into this chaotic well it's not chaotic it's just a different sort of room so uh, you can see that this particular dungeon is very fond of these uh, hallways with leaves coming off of them and I think that's fine. Uh, you can see where the doors would go, and you can see where the doors would go here and here and here, and you can put whatever you'd like in those areas. They're small rooms, so maybe they're uh, uh, little treasure holds, or maybe they're bedrooms. And down here you've got a more open region, but it's much smaller uh, in terms of the height of the roof. Oh, we look like we might have a more natural dungeon this time. Well, maybe not. Um, but we see we've got some really narrow crawl spaces here. That black is not a wall. That's a crawl space. Um, but then it opens up into this big and complicated area where you've got all sorts of uh, these long-ass halls. They're not simply long-ass halls. They have a lot of uh, 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 topology within them. And those generally would represent something like shelving or computers. Or it depends on the, the kind of setting you're working with. Um, so these hallways aren't simply hallways, they are storage areas. Uh, on the other hand, you've got places like uh, like this, which is probably some kind of bedroom. 
um, and these areas here. Since this is so off to the side and behind a broken region, this might be uh, ruins or something else. And of course, there's limits to what a roguelike can do in terms of interpretation, but a human GM could easily interpret this, and a roguelike could make a decent stab at it. It would still be more interesting than the current generation of roguelike rooms. And every time you do it, completely distinct, completely new. But, and I'm careful to stress this, it's very rarely so complicated that you'll feel horribly lost. It has a, a kind of um, limiting, self-connecting system. Um, it's an emergent system. I didn't carefully program it. So, for example, just as you're walking down this hallway and you're going, oh, this hallway is going on forever, and there's all sorts of weird cubby holes and stuff, and then you come back out near the beginning, or here you can see that there is some complexity going on, but it's basically a straight run of rooms until you hit here and you realize that you've actually got a lot of rooms to explore, but you won't feel lost because this is a hub, so you keep coming back to it. Um, I really think that this is a really sleek and easy system. Well, here's a cave <laughs> for generating maps, and I really think that there's a lot of potential here for generating really interesting uh, emergent games, both in terms of tabletop games where the GM would fill these maps out, and in terms of roguelikes where they're filled out automatically. And you can see this dungeon is a beautiful example of a dungeon of a map which is half natural and half structured. And here you have one of these repetitive rooms that's probably something like you know, a stack of computer cores or something. Uh, I tend towards sci-fi settings. And here you've got a completely different feel for your dungeon, where you've got this wing over here, but then you've got this primary area with a whole bunch of offshoots, and you've got some more wings over here. Um, and even these seemingly boring uh, twisty passages, they're not simply twisty passages all alike. They all have a unique feel to them. And, generally speaking, the brushes will come along and do something cool to them before their time is up. Oh, this is a slow map. Ah, there we are. And now these maps can be generated extremely fast. I've slowed it down so that you can see the process happening, but I could, in fact, calculate the whole map out in, you know, a couple of... A hundred, maybe a hundred milliseconds at this size for, of this size of map. So this is a very linear map, but it still has a couple of surprises lying in the wings, and a couple of interesting little details. And I could go on forever, and I kind of am, just because I like seeing maps. Um, and I like the way that they get generated. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So this is a very structured map, like an army base or something. <laughs> As I said, this is a simple algorithm, but I really like it. Uh, I, I don't know if I have time to develop anything using this, because I'm still working on my avatar kit. But I spent the last couple of hours just doing this, um, and it was really rewarding. This is an excellent, excellent start to a very, very good map generation tool. Uh, I really am enjoying this this particular algorithm. So that's it. I'm just going to go ahead and generate one more map. You can stop watching. Oh, look at that. That's cool. I just love how variable these maps are, but they never feel... You never would get... You'd never feel like they were completely random. <laughs> Some pews. Oh, neat. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this.